Hi everyone, it's Mark here again. I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network. Um, I like to use these video meetings to keep track of our membership. So we're currently welcoming over 150 new members every day to our LinkedIn groups. And I think we're at 103,000, which is, which is exciting. But this is the best bit of the job for me. This is where I get to, to meet uh, our full members. So I'm delighted that Ingo Schrader has joined me. Ingo, thank you so much for joining me from what I imagine is a chilly Berlin. Yes, it's true. Thank you, Mark, for having me. And we have today, we have um, a beautiful sun, sunny day, but uh, we have snow in the streets and it's uh, rather chilly. But um, it's a real winter after so many years. And um, I kind of like it. Yeah, I, I, I do love extreme weather. Um, yeah, I remember when we when I was a child, we would have a foot of snow every winter. Um, yeah, sure, uh, we don't have that. We can go through some winters here in the south of England with, okay. without any snow at all. We had a flurry last year, last week, but anyway, we're we're expecting. Apparently, the Russians send us their weather, oh. um, and so we're expecting. Oh, let's uh, limit it to the weather, uh, and it's okay. Um, yeah, the beast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, that's all we want. Thanks. Yeah, nice bit of snow. Thank you. Excellent. So what I'd like to do is to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself and tell our fellow members about the work you do. Um, and then we're going to play a game, which yeah. will lighten the mood somewhat. We're going to create your fantasy cultural year from the answers to 10 very easy questions. And okay. then we'll play the this or that game. So let's dive straight in. So would you like to introduce yourself, Ingo? Yes, um, I I am um, an architect and artist, a visual artist, and uh, I studied architecture in um, Braunschweig, a city uh, um, west of Berlin, and um, in Venice. And um, I started working as an architect, um, but uh, always uh, was doing. Um, art uh, as a parallel uh, uh, work and uh, uh, occupation because originally I, I wanted to study arts and, and I didn't um, have the courage uh, at that time to, to go into art uh, to dedicate uh, my life fully to the arts. So I found architecture would be a, a good uh, way to combine a more, let's say, uh, normal uh, job with artistic uh, and uh, uh, design um, interests. And over the years, I've uh, more and more uh, come back to the, uh, to the visual arts. And uh, in the last years, I have um, put an emphasis on the art and found, um, interestingly, that um, my formation as an architect um, really influences the way I look at art and um, the things that I, I'm interested in. So um, most of my artwork uh, deals with uh, space and um, what I'm interested in especially is when um, the two dimensional um, surfaces become three-dimensional, so the, the brink of um, between the dimensions when something, because you can't see space, you cannot uh, work on it as a material, it is an immaterial thing that you can um, experience and, and everybody is aware that space exists, but you cannot tell exactly what it is. So it's very interesting and very demanding. And so um, I find um, it in interesting to um, to work with, um, for example, with mirrors or with uh, reliefs and uh, with um, sculptural um, combinations where you can experience when does space start to um, uh, to exist and mm. This it's, is fa it's fascinating. Um, you've reminded me of the concept of negative space in design. 
um, the arrow in FedEx, for example. Uh -huh. um, it's it's fascinating and, and and being an architect yes you're at that really sweet spot a very rare sweet spot between a kind of logical and commercial approach to designing spaces and the creativity and the artistic license that that makes that special yeah. because and i'm really looking forward to the first question i'm going to ask you because this is right up your street literally um so that's great so where can we where can we see some of the work I can um, share my my desktop. Um, let me see how I do it. I um, know I, I think it's probably easier if we put the link if we put the link in the in your profile. So okay, what's the what's the website address? My website is um, um, ingoschrader. dot com. So ingoschrader without any uh, dots or hyphens or so, just ingoschrader. dot com. Okay. Um, Ingo, S C S C H R A D E R dot com. There we go. I think uh, I found you because I'll be okay. able to put this in the uh, in there. Oh yes, I think we looked at this last time. So, and I I have a bit um, conscious that I didn't um, work on my website since some years or so. Oh no, don't worry. I'm, yeah, gonna, they are, they are, I'm going to quickly share my screen yeah, so our viewers. Okay and can get a quick sense of um, sure. of that. So, so you yeah, see, so. I, I really um, did an order a 2D, 3D photography and studies. And we uh, you see uh, um, the top thing. Oh, yes, we can go to Metalworks, for example, the, the, um, or Mirrorworks, it's a Spiegel Builder. Yeah. And um, this is available in English and German. So, so no, it, it isn't. Uh, so, uh, it oh, isn't. I think um, I got, a, I got a, a, a Google pop up allowed me to, to ah, translate it. So okay. it may do. Um, this so is for, great. So this is just a taster for, for people. So yeah. if you'd like to find more, it's ingoschrader.com. That's I-N-G-O-S-C-H-R-A-D-E-R.com. That's great. So I'm keen to do our little interview. So We'll put the link and some of your images in, in okay. the profile on the website. Right. Are you ready for your your fantasy cultural year? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the first question I'm going to ask you is if you have a favorite building, and I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. Do you, you know, uh, as an architect, I'm, um, I have maybe many favorite buildings, but if I think uh, of buildings that really um, touched me uh, in a very... Uh, very uh, strong way. It is, for example, um, the Pantheon in Rome mm -hmm. uh, with its gigantic cupola and the open, um, um, the opening in the, this cupola where the light comes in and the rain falls in and everything. This is a, a fantastic space. Love uh, that. I think that's great. So the, your favorite, so for the purposes of our journey, I'd like you to imagine that you're sitting in a uh, a roadside cafe um, overlooking the Pantheon in Rome. It's a beautiful day. It's perhaps 6 p.m., late afternoon, early evening. Um, it's been warm all day. It's June. It's warm, but it's not stifling hot. And you're having a lovely sit down in this outdoor cafe, people walking around. Now, to the right of you is a book. And it's a book that either you've loved, that's followed you all your life, or something you've discovered recently um, that you would want us to know about. So what book is on that table, Ingo? Um, yeah, one book that has always, um, which I, uh, I have liked a lot, is um, The Diaries of Max Frisch, who's a Swiss author and happened to be architect before he uh, decided to, to go uh, fully into writing. And um, the diary is um, is so nice because you can open the book at any page and start reading. It is um, full of um, episodes, full of fragments of um, novels. He has also very nice questionnaires um, that are about love, about death, about money, about uh, many interesting topics, and that that are very. Um, yeah, that go to the core, uh, these questionnaires. I can 
really re recommend uh, this book because it's um, yeah you can open it uh, anytime anywhere and and find something uh, interesting and um, love it that's deep. great so that's the diary of Max Frisch yeah yeah okay excellent I I read the um, the unabridged diaries of Samuel Pepys a few years mm -hmm. ago and um, I always struggled with the language because it's kind of 17th mm -hmm. century English um, but rather like Shakespeare once you've got into a few chapters it's like learning a language it's something yeah, yeah. That opens yeah. up it's great excellent so you're there with the book now on the table next to you is a drink of some description it's a warm <laughs> um, sunny uh, late afternoon you can have anything you like what would your perfect drink be in those circumstances I think uh, sitting in Rome um, it would be a, a glass of white wine or, or sparkling wine nice any particular wine or no just a, a good italian wine excellent that's great so there's the picture there's the start of our journey now you're feeling very pleased with yourself because you've just come away from a meeting with a wealthy italian research foundation backed by a family office in italy um, and they have agreed to send you on a year-long trip all expenses paid a generous fee, first class all the way, all the help you need. And they'd like you to study the landscape of the art of arts and culture um, in a different country. So uh -huh. not Germany, not Italy. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, you can choose where anywhere to go. Um, so where would you want to spend the year? I think um, one, one country that really... Um, um, fascinates me and I've never been there would be Japan because okay. I think they have uh, lots of um, the art is very um, interesting for me it's also they have a lot of uh, minimal and um, very um, uh, deep um, uh, artistic uh, tradition and also they have this tradition of um, ink uh, drawings and um, artwork with ink which is part of my work too and um another not not country but continent which uh, fascinate me um, a lot is uh, africa where i also have never been and um it is always it has uh, the um people are scared from africa because there are so many um poor people, wars and uh, corruption and um, chaos. But I think it is only one side of the medal. And uh, I think it is a very uh, interesting and very fascinating um, continent. Which That's would be... lovely. I'm going to have to pin you down for one. So is it Japan? OK, it would be Japan. Yeah. OK, excellent. Right. So you're you're going to be based in would you like to be based in a particular city because otherwise it'll be tokyo kyoto or osaka Where no I, i'm not um, too much informed um to to say i, I go there maybe i, I would um i would um, let uh, destiny decide and i think we'll put you in on. tokyo tokyo is um i've been several times and it's it's enormous as a city. It's mm -hmm. a sprawling mm -hmm. city. I think the the M25 motorway around London is is huge, and I think you could only just put Tokyo inside that. So yeah. unlike Rome, of course, where you can pretty much walk everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you're on the plane, first class, um, and the, uh, one of the stewards hands you a note, and it's from the family foundation that have employed you for the year in this fantasy year um they're placing a condition on your on your year and they want to understand the impact of limited musical intake so they'd like you to limit your musical listening to one genre of music only for the whole year um so one type of music so what would you choose it's difficult. I'm very uh, um, a big fan of jazz music, uh, modern jazz music, and um, if I would be limited, maybe I would go for classical music, 
Okay. Which is um, just a bigger, uh, bigger um, amount of um, things to choose from and um, more to discover because I'm not very, um, I don't know everything. So um, there's a lot more to, to discover, maybe. Excellent. I'm going to pin you down a little bit inside yeah. cath classical music. So if we assume we have Baroque classical, classical as in sort of 17th, 18th century, um, nationalist and romantic, um, and then contemporary classical music. If I had to pin you down for one of those periods, which would you go for? I'd be, I would um, take the, the most modern classical music just to learn uh, more about it uh, because I like Baroque music, um, especially Bach, but the other Baroque music sometimes is a bit um, monotonous uh, for yeah. all the cembalo and and so on. And it's nice, but I um, I've heard it a lot, and so I would go to for the contemporary classical music. There we go. Uh, yeah, contemporary classical music, which of course would include film music. Um, so that's quite good. So you'd have mm -hmm. some Zimmer yeah. in there as well. So that's to to uh, to um, get to know something. Um, which I don't know so far, so. Good. So you arrive in, Tio uh, in Tokyo. Um, there is a group of, of people there who, who will be your friends for the year and um, introduce you to certain events. And the first thing they'd like you to do, uh, is, they'd like to do is to take you to a dance performance of some description. Now, it doesn't have to be Japanese. Um, <laughs> it can be any dancer, living or dead, or any dance group or any dance style in the magical theater that we're taking on this tour, you'll be sitting in the front of the dress circle and you can have any dance performance you like on the stage. It could be Japanese if you wish, but um, it doesn't have to be. So we want to know what your dance preferences are. Um, I, I rather like um, ballet. Um, but um, in this case, I would say, okay, um, they could choose, um, they could present also um, Japanese um, classical ballet, which would be interesting for me. Yeah. Not, uh, not a disco or not a conventional um, um, dance dances, but uh, something more interesting or more, more artistic, maybe. Okay. You can have that traditional... Japanese inspired dance and ballet that would be okay. that would be great now the show is great you you're you're coming out and the your friends say we'd like to take you to dinner um there is every cuisine under the sun in Tokyo and you can choose the the, the cuisine that you have for dinner what would you choose oh you know um I like Italian food. I also like um, the the um, for example the uh, crossover cuisine, um, um, Oriental, Italian, something like that. But um, Japanese food is also excellent. So I'm not a, a big sushi fan, but there are so many um, different things in Japanese cuisine, and, and sushi is also from basic to uh, excellent there's also a big range so yeah excellent so you can have sushi or bento is warm sushi i think isn't yeah. it cooked sushi so yeah. excellent that's that's great um now the next day is sport day in japan mm -hmm. and your colleagues have said they'll like to take you to any sporting event you like for the afternoon you can participate if you wish or you can just spectate and it doesn't have to be a again doesn't have to be a Japanese no. yeah. sport. So, what sport would you like to do or watch? Um, doing, I would like to do yoga, which I'm doing regular regularly. Um, and um, for watching, maybe something like a horse race or so. Um, yeah, that's absolutely possible. I was in Hong Kong in the '90s before the handover to to China, and and they have a horse, they have a, a racetrack in the middle of the city, mm -hmm. uh, called Sha Tin, mm -hmm. I think it is, 
or Happy Valley as well. Um, and apparently the Chinese, certainly back then, I don't know if it's the same now, they would spend more on a weekend on horse racing, gambling than than the Brits do all year. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, that would so you can have a horse race. There we go. Horse race or maybe a, a regatta sailing regatta something. Oh yes. Nice. Yeah. That would be great. Um, I'm not so uh, so um, into soccer or on or, or basketball is also very nice to look at, I think. Mm, yeah. So, some of these. Excellent. Now the next day is visual art day, and there is a magical digital art gallery in Tokyo that has in its records the work of all famous artists, established artists, mm -hmm. which it projects or shows on screens in a kind of maze through which you can walk. And the work is presented in chronological order of that in that artist's life. So you can literally walk through the creative life of a famous artist. Um, who you can only have one though. So oh, who no. would you who would you choose? Well, oh, that's difficult. A really a tough one. If I could, if I should um, limit it to one, it's really difficult. Yeah, I know. Perhaps somebody who's inspired you? Yeah, there are many. Um, I like, for example, I like the work of Anish Kapoor, the British artist. Um, not everything, but um, he's, I think he's a very, yeah, he's an excellent artist. Sometimes it's, I don't like the work, but sometimes most of the, the work is very relevant and very researching. Um, excellent. Yeah, That's that would so be you can, you can walk through um, the complete works of Anish Kapoor. Yeah. There we go. Um, and the next day is that we're going to lighten the mood somewhat and um, we're going to take you to the magical theatre, but it can show any play or musical and it can even have the original cast. So um, what play or musical would you like to see on that stage? I once saw a musical I, I enjoyed a lot. Uh, it is by the uh, American uh, ballet di director um, Forsyth, and it's called Isabel's Dance. I, I would like to see it again, maybe. Okay. Is it yeah. the, the, you can see the same performance that you saw there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Isabel's Dance. Yeah. Excellent. William Forsyth. William Forsyth. And then it's cinema day. Um, and what I'd like you to do, your friends have said, look, we'd like to take you and show you any film, any movie, but could you choose one that we may not have seen that you love that we will hopefully enjoy? Um, special movie. I like the films of uh, Pedro Almodovar and mm -hmm. um, a special movie. I don't... Um, remember now than the exact names don't worry that's 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 giving enough to to pedro almodovar yeah yeah so i know i can picture him the director yeah. some great great movies great. Yeah, he's um, other members will be better informed than you or i so they'll be able to, to okay. that. so that's great now the next day is we're calling it hero day um we've booked a table in a very good restaurant in tokyo for lunch um, you've got it for two hours and you can have anyone with you, but what, one person with you, living or dead, who might be a hero of yours or somebody who you would just love to spend two hours with to hear their, to be able to ask them some questions. So who might your dinner guest be? Oh, that's also a fantastic question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Living or dead. Or maybe um, the architect and artist Le Corbusier would be an interesting person. Nice, Le Corbusier. Yeah. Oh, that's a great choice. Fantastic. 
Um, now the next day is um, one of those lovely days where you you know when you wake up in the morning, your your day is your own. There are no children, no jobs, no tasks, no chores, no appointments, no meetings, and you know that between waking up and going back to sleep again, you can do whatever you like in Tokyo. What would you do? Start in Tokyo. Maybe uh, just grab my camera and uh, stroll around and and see what hap what happens. Just to to um, to let the um, let things happen by chance and and look at things maybe without any plan and any um, destin uh, destination. That's a nice idea. Just wander wanderlust. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Now, um, you're back on, you've, you've done the week year, you've written a short report, which is all you're required to do. You're on the plane on the way home, <coughs> excuse me, and another note is dropped on your lap, and it is from the Family Foundation thanking you for, for the work that you've done, um, and relink, they're releasing you from your musical prison. Um, <laughs> and you can, you could, so you've been listening to classical music, contemporary classical music all year. Um, and you can oh. have <laughs> you can have one one piece of music that is outside that genre. Yeah. Um, it might be, for example, a, a a piece of music that has been with you all your life, um, or your favorite song. Um, it doesn't need to be classical music; it can be anything. So, what would you want to listen to as the first piece of music that you've heard outside classic modern contemporary classical music? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe Prince. Um, I count the days. Lovely, that's fantastic. I've I've seen some wonderful. It's it's the funkiest thing I've ever heard. It's a piece that he played um, on a TV show, an American TV show, and it is just ridiculously funky. Um, yeah. I was lucky to see him live. I saw the Love Sexy tour in London. Mm. Um, you know when that was when little red corvette was was in the charts yeah. wonderful incredibly underrated during his lifetime yeah um, he's, he's so versatile it's so 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 um really a genius who was uh yeah and a, and a and a better guitarist than most people ever realized absolutely um there is a lovely he did a tribute show and there's a video on youtube when my guitar gently weeps and he plays yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he plays the solo in that and yeah. then throws it in the air and the guitar disappears yeah. incredible excellent thank you very much thank you ingo that's your that's your okay. fantasy cultural year if i had an estate agency i would book that for you so you can go and do okay. it wouldn't that be great <laughs> um we're now going to do the this or that game quickly if that's okay, okay. um i've got a few options for you um these are somewhat experimental so um, I, I'm glad okay. you're being a, a guinea pig for me. <clears throat> so you have to choose one of these two things. Mm -hmm. First one is Taylor Swift singing opera or Pavarotti singing pop. The first one, Taylor Swift singing opera. Nice. Accordion or bagpipes? Accordion. Do you want a banjo serenade at your funeral or do you want a heavy metal guitar solo at your wedding? Would, would be, what was it? Banjo or what? Banjo serenade or a guitar solo at your wedding. Okay, banjo at the funeral. My wedding has already taken place so we had no... Heavy metal. Okay. Um, a hip hop, a hip hop opera, or mm -hmm. a reggae symphony. Hip hop. Okay, nice. Um, fiction to escape reality, or non-fiction to explain it. No fiction. Excellent. Now we're going to do some rather easier ones, you'll be pleased to know. Tea or coffee? 
TV. Radio or television? Radio. Car or motorcycle? Car. Comedy or horror? Comedy. A concert hall or a sports stadium? Concert hall. Cat or dog? Um, difficult. Um, dog. Test the water or dive in at the deep end? Excuse me? Test the water or yeah. jump in at the deep end? Test the water. <laughs> <laughs> Orange juice, bits or no bits? Pulp or no pulp? Absolutely. Smooth or, or bits. Fine. Fine. Library or museum? Museum. Beethoven or Mozart? Beethoven. Shower or bath? Shower. Cooking or being cooked for? Both is nice, but uh, cooking. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Start immediately or wait until the last minute? So uh, there's a difference between wishing and doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I'll, you can keep that one. Um, messy desk or tidy desk? Same uh, answer, but let's say, uh, okay, tidy desk is I like best. Yeah. Um, bedroom door, open or closed? Open. And finally, for this one, Ingo, see the future or change the past? Difficult. Maybe see the future, which would be a little bit um, strange. Mm. But the other thing is also very strange. So, <laughs> Ingo, thank you so much. That was good fun. I hope you enjoyed yeah. it. It's a nice absolutely uh, door open to your life and your preferences. So, thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for being one of our full members. Um, I really, it's really appreciated. Don't rush off, but for the time being, uh, wherever this appears, um, there'll be links to your work and your LinkedIn profile, for example. Um, but thank you so much. I hope that was fun. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Mark. And um, will you keep in touch? And will will I have uh, some um, like an introduction or um, um, help for uh, using your network? Yes, we can do that as well. But for the moment, I'm just going to stop the recording and, okay. and we can have a further conversation. Thanks again very Thanks. much, Ingo. Okay, bye-bye.